administration uh, class first. And uh, so uh, that was a mistake. So I realized we have open church planting. So uh, I had just moved to this. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining the class today. We're going to pray and get started. Hope you all had a good weekend. And uh, let's take a moment to pray. And I also want us, uh, you know, many of you have been following the news, so what's been happening in Afghanistan and uh, the difficult situation in that country. Now let's just um, pray together this morning before we start. Just pray and say, God, uh, let there be peace in Afghanistan. Uh, the Bible says that uh, the Lord, he makes the wars to cease. You know, so that's that's who our God is. He makes wars to cease. And um, so we'll pray and say, God, bring peace in that land. And uh, we pray that the lives of people will be protected. Uh, you know, uh, we don't want to see people killed. We don't want to see people lose their lives unnecessarily. So just pray that, and then we will start with our class, okay? So can somebody lead us in prayer? We all are going to agree. We're all going to pray together. Uh, but somebody can just lead us in prayer for our class, but also pray, take, take a minute or two just to pray for Afghanistan, for peace and for the protection of lives. Somebody could lead us, please. Anyone could lead us. Okay, I'll pray, Pastor. Go ahead, Thomas. Father, in Jesus' name, we come before the throne of grace, Daddy. We thank you for your mercy and grace. Your word says your grace is new every morning, O oh Lord, for today's grace, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name. Father, you are so mm -hmm. good. Your love endures forever. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Jesus. Father, Jesus came to save each and every human Lord, you gave the life to everyone, O oh Lord. So especially we pray for Afghanistan right now today, Father. What mm -hmm. is going on? Confusion, war, fight, and so much of why happening. Father, have mercy on the land in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Father, we agree together. As your word says, any two of you agree on earth, Father in heaven will hear and, and do that. Father, here, Father, we agree together for mm -hmm. the matter of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, mm. we speak the peace mm. of God over the land in Jesus' name. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the King of God come upon the land in Jesus' name, O Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Dad. We rebuke every violence. We rebuke every demonic enforcement there. We speak the peace of God. We speak the kingdom of God, mm. the life of God mm. in Jesus' name, O Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm. For, thank you, Father, for your grace, O Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Father, especially we speak, uh, let the will reach to the land in Jesus' name, O oh Lord. We thank mm. you, Father. We thank you, Daddy. Let, let them have the peace in Jesus' name. Father, we pray for today's class in Jesus' name. Father, I gather here to learn. Father, open our eyes of an mm. understanding. Holy Spirit, work in our lives, Father. Whatever mm. we are learned, mm. be useful in the kingdom of God, to build the kingdom, mm. to build your church. Thank you, Father. Let me have the burden for the city, country, Lord. We ask in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, everyone, for joining the class today. And uh, the recording is on, so this lecture will be uh, recorded and uh, made available. So, we, in this course, we've been talking about urban church planting. And, um, and we're just going through the introduction section. Uh, we're just touching on some key truths, insights that we need to prepare ourselves as we uh, get ready to, you know, always think about doing ministry in an urban context. That means in a city, uh, in a you know, uh, an urban center, which uh, is very diverse and people from different parts of the country or maybe even different parts of the world are living. So we 
we talked about the, you know, just a quick review, we talked about the importance of depending on the Holy Spirit. We talked about getting God's heart for the city. That means we should have God's heart for people or people in the city. Uh, and we should not get overwhelmed by what we see happening in the city. Uh, neither should we, you know, become uh, 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 distracted trying to do everything. You know, we are not going to, you know, save everybody in uh, ourselves. You know, we each one of us have a part to do. So we need to see what God wants us to do and work on that. And then we started talking last week about the natural dynamics of the city. So I just want to quickly review that. And then we go into talking about the spiritual dynamics of the city. And we need, um, we need to study both of these. So we'll get into a little bit more detail on, you know, doing, uh, on studying this. Let me just share my, uh, uh, the PDF that uh, we have been using uh, the, for the notes here, yeah, and uh, it'll help us review what we have been doing. So we, we, we started talking about natural dynamics. So we did cover this last uh, class where we said, uh, as we are preparing to work in the city or in an urban center, um, uh, I'm using the word city, but you know, nowadays our cities are made up of many cities. They are urban centers or many smaller towns make up today's cities, or sometimes we have twin cities or tri-cities all together. So uh, I'm just using the word city, but it depends, you know, wherever you are, whatever urban center you are, you know, we're referring to that. Uh, it is very important for us to understand the natural dynamics of the city where we are. So uh, we need to take some time uh, to look at what is happening in the city. And so, um, you know, when we say natural dynamics, uh, we're talking about the history of the city. We're also talking about the civic administration, um, the political environment. We're talking about the economy. We're talking about the demographics, uh, the distribution, the age, population, language, cultural background, senior citizens, young people. You know, trying to understand all of that that's going on in the city trying to understand the socioeconomic issues, how, how is the society functioning? What are the economic issues happening there in the city? Uh, look at the education, look at the distribution of education institutions in the city. And we'll, we'll, you know, later on, we'll understand why these are important, how they help influence the kind of ministry that we would choose to do or do in the city. Uh, what are some of the major industries, industrial hubs, workers, unemployment, you know, if there's a prison or if there are other things that are happening in the city, it's important to take a look at this, you know, and that is going to help us, you know, decide what God wants us to do. You know, uh, we get a feel for the city. Um, it helps us pray for the city. Uh, it helps us maybe lead, God may lead us to target specific areas and needs in the city. And uh, it'll also be important to develop uh, certain strategies uh, in that city, you know, for that, to minister in that city. So it's important to understand the natural dynamics. Um, I remember this was 2002, um, uh, I mean, I did share with you last class about, you know, how Bangalore City has changed. Uh, but I just want to give you, you know, just another example where in 2002, uh, two people, my, myself and another young person from our church, we actually went to Kabul on, uh, uh, we spent about, I don't know, uh, forget now, but maybe about three or four days in Kabul. Um, and our goal was to explore the city to see if we could do something there, you know. Uh, if we had heard about, of course, this was right after 2001. Um, 
the 9-11 situation, the U.S. came in, they moved, and uh, there's been a lot of fighting there. And uh, the Taliban were pushed out. Um, and uh, so this was later part of 2002. So sometime around this time of the year, we had gone. Our goal was, I mean, we were running a software company. Our goal was to see if we could use that as a way to, you know, serve the city, do something in the city. So we spent a few days, you know, just going around the city, trying to see what is going on in terms of technology. I mean, that was, you know, we thought we could come and help in that in that area. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, and then, you know, after we actually moved around in the city, we, you know, we saw that, Things were not, I mean, things were, in, what to say, in a very, very difficult situation there. And uh, it was very, you know, to come in and like set up even a, you know, software training center or a, or a, so that was our goal, you know, maybe we could set up a software training center or a internet cafe or something that will help people develop technology in that space. And uh, it was very difficult at that time when from what we, you know, so, and then we came back and we said, okay, you know, we are not going to do anything now because uh, things are not conducive at that time. So at the point I want to just get across is that, you know, it's important for us to get on, get to understand the city uh, before you can think of a strategy. How can we work in the city? How can we do something here? So like that, uh, I remember we also explored, you know, actually, so this was in 2001, somebody had told us about an area uh, near uh, Mangalore. So Mangalore is about 300 kilometers uh, from where we are, from Bangalore city. We have this Mangalore, which is actually like a student, more like a student community, but and it's, it's a well-developed town. And they said outside of Mangalore, 12 kilometers outside of that city, there are a lot of medical colleges and uh, coming up or have been established, um, but there is no church there in that area. So what we did was um, in 2000, I think it was again in 2002, uh, we just went and explored. So we, there were a group of four of us, four young people, uh, we went uh, we had no contact in that city. You know, we just heard that, hey, something is happening 12 kilometers outside of Mangalore City. There is no church. Uh, it's a good place to start a church. So, uh, we had no contact. We simply, you know, uh, we went to Mangalore. From Mangalore, we took a bus out uh, into this town, little small town called Darlakata, uh, where there were these, you know, sure enough, there were quite a few medical colleges that have been established. So obviously a lot of students are coming to study there. And the town was very, uh, you know, still at that time, this was in 2000, 2002, uh, still underdeveloped, you know, uh, there was, you know, small res restaurants and things like that, but not much. So we just, you know, were surveying the place. It was pretty underdeveloped at that time. So we just walked into some of these campuses trying to, talk to students, get a feel, uh, seeing if there's some contact we could get who would help us in the process of planting a church. Uh, so we were just walking around the city and then uh, we came to a small, uh, what we refer to as a circle or a city center, very, very small, you know, nothing much. But then we looked up and there was a, a video cinerama, a video, uh, you know, it's like almost like a video cafe. So it wasn't like a movie theater, but it was a small hall, uh, you know, where they would play videos, uh, movies on video and a small hall, maybe about 50 people maximum could be seated and they would watch the movie. So it wasn't a proper movie theater. It was more like a video cinerama, they would call it. So small hall that they play the video and people would watch on a big screen. So that was the only, you know, form of entertainment that was there in that town. Uh, and that's where, you know, I think students would go and watch movies and stuff. So we walked up there and our idea was, hey, uh, that's a place we could start a church. So we went in and uh, we met the person who was running the place. And uh, we asked him, you know, hey, on Sundays, 
what time does your when do you have your first show and uh, he i think he said it was something like uh, you know 12 30 or something like whatever the time was but it was kind of later half of the day was it in the morning later so we asked him he said you know you know we, we would like to start a church uh, would you mind if we rented your uh, this hall uh, uh, first we want to do a concert a music concert uh, and we want to do that on a Saturday evening and then on Sundays we want to rent this hall um, uh, every Sunday morning uh, you know for two hours before just half an hour before your movie show starts so I think it was like uh, you know 10 30 to 12 30 and one o'clock is movie show would start so can you can be rented you know how much money would you want and like he was more than happy because that was uh, you know a time when he was not doing anything in the hall so he was more than happy to rent it to us so what we did was uh, now you know remember this was just four of us and we we were a very small church in bangalore but we planned it out we said okay on this saturday evening we'll do a music concert Again, this was before his evening show, Saturday evening show. So it was like, I think, uh, 4 to 5.30 or something. We'll do a music concert. Now, we didn't have too many people. We, the concert was just one person on a guitar. That was the concert. Uh, but we went, you know, one day before, we stuck posters all around the town, very small town, uh, invited, you know, students to come. And we did a music concert with basically one person playing the guitar and singing gospel songs, kind of those things. So about 25, 30 students showed up for that gospel concert. And you know, this was not people we knew, it was just random people. So they came, they listened to the singing, they liked it. Then we said, hey, tomorrow morning, we're having a church service right here. Would you like to come? So next Sunday, you know, we started, uh, we were ready for our regular service. And you know, maybe like two or three people showed up. Um, but that's how you know, we started uh, our church plant in Darlakata, Manglo. And, uh, you know, very interesting. And I, I want to shut, the, you know, um, just make the story short. Um, very interesting. People started coming. Out of that, there was one person who was from a non-Christian background. He was so touched. He started sharing the gospel. He gave his life to Jesus. He started sharing the gospel. And he was a medical student. And through him, many people came. And, you know, uh, a community of believers was established. And uh, there was a medical doctor. He decided to move into, get a job in one of those medical colleges. Sorry, Pastor. Uh, your voice is breaking. We lost you for the last Five to six seconds. Oh. oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. Um, is my voice clear now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, Pastor. We can hear you. Okay. 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 So uh, there was one doctor. Uh, he was married. Um, he decided to get a job uh, as a doctor in one of those hospitals. So he moved with his wife, and I think they had a little child. And uh, he moved to one of the hospitals in Derlakata, and he took leadership of the church. And so the number of people grew, and then he eventually he moved the gathering to his own house. He had a little spacious place. So uh, students are coming, and, and, and the work grew. At one point, there were about 45 students gathering, uh, medical students. And then uh, we, from there, we rented a hall in a commercial building and so we rented a large space which maybe could hold about 70 75 people uh, we you know kind of did up the hall uh, and then so it was more like a formal more formal gathering place uh, and then the church had a meeting there and uh, you know about 40 45 people gathering uh, and uh, students and of course you know these are all medical college students so uh, there would be students coming in every year. There'll be students graduating and leaving uh, once they finish their studies. So there was kind of a movement of students, but it was a, a viable community 
of, of believers that were meeting there for quite a few years and many, many students were ministered to, you know, in that community. So uh, that's how that work started. And then uh, I think, um, and I forget the year now, but um, um, maybe around 2011 or 12, uh, when that doctor's family, he wanted to, he decided to move on, like he was stepping, going overseas uh, on an overseas uh, assignment. And so uh, we moved that congregation into Mangalore City because we said, you know, we could reach Mangalore City, which was about 12 kilometers in. We could reach people here and they can also travel and so on. So anyway, so uh, eventually, you know, we, we had different people go there as pastors. And right now, uh, Pastor Paul Emmanuel and his wife Diana are actually pastors in Mangalore. And we had two locations, Mangalore City and then one in Darlakata the place where we had originally started. Of course, now, you know, those things have been closed uh, physically over the last uh, year and a half because of lockdown. But uh, there is a viable church meeting in Mangalore City uh, so that now congregation has families as well as students. It's about 70 people. Um, and then we also have like a branch back in Darlakata which we have closed and we've given up the hall and all that now temporarily we'll we will have to resume it once things are okay but that's just an example where you know uh, uh, we're going back in time we're going back in this was 2002 so those days uh we had to physically go we had to physically go to Kabul. we had to physically go to Dirlakata and you know, survey the place, try to get an understanding of, you know, what is there, what options are there, and then prayerfully decide, you know, God, can we do something for these people? But whatever we do, it has to be sustainable. It has to be something that would, remember, our goal is to create self-sustaining communities. So if you ask me, why didn't you do something in Kabul at that time? It was because, you know, we knew we couldn't sustain it. Neither were we equipped to sustain it neither were things conducive on the ground to be able to have something sustainable at that time. That's I'm talking about 2002. Um, the second thing, whereas in Darlakata, we could sustain, we could do something, you know, and every weekend we would send teams of people from Bangalore to Mangalore. They'll take an overnight bus. They'll go minister and come back. And we did that until we had, you know, the doctor couple move there to take care of the work. And then from then on, you know, we had uh, pastors and so on. So uh, the point I want to get across is uh, it is important to get an understanding of what is happening on the ground, the natural dynamics, so that then you can come up with, okay, how are we going to work in this community? So Darlakata, as I mentioned, it was just medical colleges. There were about three or four in that area. So which is primarily students. Of course, there were, you know, some of the residents, the people who were living there, the locals, but they were, you know, providing services like restaurants and things like that. But the main community was hundreds of students in that town. And uh, they are the ones whom we were targeting. And they are the students who come from all over the world, uh, not world, sorry, all over India. Some of them may be living abroad, but that's very few. Most of them would be from around India coming to study there. Uh, and those, those are the ones we are targeting. So once we understand you know, the natural dynamics, then we are able to start to work. And we also have to think in terms of sustainability. That means... Uh, we don't want to do something for just six months and come away. I mean, that's okay. Six months is fine. But our goal is uh, to do something sustainable, something that will endure through time, right? So understanding the natural dynamics takes some time to study. Today, as I mentioned in the last class, we have the advantage of uh, the internet. So you can go online, you can Google, uh, you can look at Google Maps 
and through using Google Maps, you can actually get in to get an overview, a bird's eye view of the city or the town. You know, so you can actually do a survey remotely. Those days we had to go physically on ground to you know, understand that, hey, these are the things that are there. Uh, that is always good. But today, even before you get on the ground, you can always do a Google search, a Google survey, or a survey on Google Maps. Uh, you can read a lot of information that's available online about the city, about the town, about the demographics. Uh, you can survey and say, okay, you know, these are the industrial areas. These are the these are kinds of edu educations. These are where the schools are. This is where the colleges are. Uh, these are where the movie theaters are, the malls are, you know, so you could do a lot of surveying of the town or the city just using Google Maps, you know, and it makes it very convenient, very fast. Uh, you save a lot of time and even money uh, uh, to understand the natural dynamics of the city or even part of the city that you are trying to reach. So. That's very important, okay? So I encourage you uh, in whichever city or town or uh, urban center you're looking at working, you feel God is sending you there, or if you're going to start a new work, uh, take some time to do that. You know, through Google Maps, you can survey, get an understanding of this is where things are. Uh, therefore, this is what I can expect. You know, if I'm seeing a bar, uh, obviously I'm going to, you know, there, there are a lot of young people are going to be hanging out there. They're going to be there. There's a mall. People are there, you know, uh, schools, education institutions. So this is where people are, cafes, people are there. So it gets, you get a good sense of what is happening on the ground. Okay. Any questions so far on the natural dynamics, on studying the natural dynamics of a city or a town? Any questions before we go into spiritual dynamics? So, so that is one part of, you know, uh, our uh, preparation, our, our, you know, when we observe what we want to do. The second part or the also equally important part is the spiritual dynamics of the city that you are looking at. You know? um, that means uh, before you start work, it's good to get a sense of, you know, what are the challenges from a spiritual perspective that are affecting this city or maybe the town or maybe even part of the city, the, the region where you are going to work in. Now, how would we do that? So let's um, go back and look at the uh, course notes, the PDF, uh, just to give us an idea of the spiritual dynamics of urban centers. So we must understand that God has been at work in our cities and God is at work in our cities. So it's good to understand what has happened through time, through history, spiritually in the city or in the region where you're going to work. But we must also be aware that there are all kinds of demonic activity also happening in the city. And Satan's goal is to try to, you know, uh, affect or pervert or subvert what God wants to do in the city through his church, right? So remember, God's instrument in a city is the church. When I say the church, and of course the church is expressed in many ways, it's expressed through individual believers, it is expressed through many local churches, it is expressed through different Christian ministries that may have missionaries and others who may have come to work in that city. So I'm using the word church to refer to all of these Christian uh, activities, right? So God uh, wants to work in the church, in the city, through his church, through his people. 
uh, whether these people belong to local church communities, whether these people are, um, you know, they're serving under different ministries, all of them, they all belong to the church, God's church. So God is wanting, God is carrying out his purpose through his church in that city. But at the same time, the enemy, Satan, is trying to subvert that. In some way, he's trying to hinder that. In some way, he's trying to prevent that. You know. Now, I just want us to take some time to look at uh, Revelation chapter 2, because it's quite an interesting uh, thing to observe here in just one chapter as the Lord Jesus is speaking to different church churches, churches in different cities. It is very interesting that while Jesus has a message for his people, part of what he tells them has to do with what the devil is doing in that city and towards the church. It's very interesting. And not only is it interesting, it is very important, which means that in any city, the church is working, but the church must not be ignorant of what the devil is trying to do in that city. The church must not think that, hey, um, everything is going to be easy, but the church must be aware. And as much as the church, that is God's people, we God's people are planning and uh, carrying out the work that God, God wants us to do in the city, there is Satan and his demons who also have an interest in that city and they are going to try to hinder what's happening. We must be aware, we must not pretend that it's not happening. So let's take a look at this chapter two, because I'm just looking at one chapter. I mean, we could look at many other scriptures, which, uh, you know, and, and which give us insight into these things. But in Revelation chapter two, let's read these verses. Somebody could read for us verse 10, please. Revelation 10 to 10. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may taste it, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful until it, and I will give you the crown of life. Mm. Thank you. So, you know, this is the church, Jesus being the church in a city called Smyrna. So each one of these are churches in a city, right? This is the city of Smyrna. He's speaking to the church in Smyrna, and he's telling them, people, church, God's people. I want you to know something. The devil is going to come against you. You're going to suffer some things. And in fact, some of you will be put into prison. That means Satan is going to come against the church, the people. Now, obviously, uh, uh, he's going to come against the church through something. It's going to be through people. It's going to be through situations happening. Part of this, you know, Satan's opposition and attack on the church here is some people will be put into prison. They will suffer for 10 days. But the Lord is saying, your commitment must be I'm faithful to Jesus until death. Don't be afraid. I'm going to give you a crown of life. So that's church in Smyrna. Let's read about the church in Pergamos, which is... There below in verses 13 and 14. Could somebody read that for us, please? I know your works and where you dwell, where Shetan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr. Who was killed among us? But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, 
to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality mm. so to the church in pergamos what is what the lord says so jesus speaking to this church in a city called pergamos and he's saying verse 13 i know your works and where you dwell where satan's throne is so jesus is addressing the spiritual dynamic of the city he's saying church you are in the city i know that's where you are but your city is a city where satan has his throne satan's throne that means satan has a place of dominion in the city satan's throne is there he's got a huge control over the city you know and he repeats that twice right he says where satan dwells end of verse 4 13 he once again says where satan dwells so this is what jesus is saying about the about pergamos that city is a city where satan has his throne satan is dwelling that means satan has a big influence in that city so if jesus looks at our cities yes he is seeing the church but what will he see as far as or what will he tell us as far as what the satan and his demons are doing in that city to pergamos he's saying you know satan's got a big influence there he's got a, he's got a throne there he's dwelling there and he says in verse 14 you know so what is therefore what is this church experiencing you know satan's throne satan has a big place of influence in that city what is this church experiencing you see that uh, it uh, 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 there was a martyr that means they faced attacks and one of them was even killed sorry so somebody has lost their life but you also see in verse 14 there is the doctrine of balam which is trying to infiltrate the church so how was satan trying to get into the church so one we could say there must have been some persecution happening because one of them was martyred secondly satan is trying to infiltrate the church through this doctrine of balam basically some sort of teaching that is letting people get into idolatry and immorality and so jesus is saying hey watch out for that so you see how satan is there and in the spirit there is satan trying to infiltrate the church by this teaching and this is happening in the city verse 20 we look at another city this is thyatira somebody could read that please chapter 2 verse 20 never the less i have a few things against you because you allow that woman to devil who calls herself a prophet to teach and seduce my servant to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols mm. so in thyatira something very similar to pergamos is happening but here it's happening through a false prophetess named jezebel who seems to have gained entrance into the church so the church was not discerning they welcomed this person this false prophetess into the church and she is promoting her false teaching which is leading people into immorality and idolatry see immorality and idolatry things that take people away from god so uh, anything any kind of teaching that's coming into the church that takes people away from god it may look nice that's what said uses what is a seduction is something that appeals to the senses it feels nice 
but it is actually a departure from God himself. So in this case, it was a false prophetess causing the people to go away into idolatry and immorality. And this is, it somehow got into the church. It's Jesus warning them, hey, there's something wrong here. There's this false prophetess and you've allowed, you have allowed. The church was again, was not discerning and they're allowing this thing to happen. But actually behind that, Satan is at work, trying to infiltrate the church in the city. The last one, chapter three, verse nine, uh, the church in Philadelphia, somebody can read that please. Behold, I will make them of the group of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy face, and to know that I have loved thee. Hmm. Now, the church in Philadelphia is very interesting. Because to this church, which is in Philadelphia, Jesus saying, there is the synagogue of Satan, meaning this is synagogue simply means an assembly of people. So there is a group of people who actually belong to Satan. They are under his influence, but they call themselves Jews. So they are, you know, like wolves in sheep clothing or, you know, they are actually people who are calling themselves Jews, but actually they are a group of people who are demonic, who are under this influence of Satan. So Jesus is saying, look, you are in that city and there's this group of people out there who are trying to attack you and do things against you, but I will make them come and worship at your feet. It means I will make them bow before the church. That means this church, Philadelphia, is a very, very strong church. And it's a church that is going to overpower what Satan is doing in that city. So for Pergamos and Thyatira, you can say that this church, these two churches were not discerning. I mean, they had in some way let Satan's work infiltrate into the church. They were not careful. Smyrna, we don't know, you know, why is there a difference between Smyrna and Philadelphia? Both are facing demonic attacks. But in one case, people are going to be put in prison, prison Smyrna. But in another case, Philadelphia, they're going to overpower and Satan's group is going to bow before the church. Now, I don't understand all the details, but all we can say is, look, we must be like the church in Philadelphia. We must be strong. And, you know, in Revelation 3, Jesus doesn't see any flaw in the church in Philadelphia. There's nothing he rebukes them about. You know, he sees and he says, everything is good, stay strong. So obviously this church was very healthy. They were doing well. And so because of the health of that church, where it was spiritually, Jesus can tell them, Satan's group is going to come and bow before you. Right? And that's the kind of church we want to be and raise. But overall, what I want us to see from Revelation 2 and 3 is this, that wherever we are, wherever we're going to do the work, the church is God's agency or God's agent to do the work in the city, but in that city, there is demonic presence and there is opposition and there is attempt to infiltrate or infiltration possible if people are not careful. So think about, you know, a large urban center, meaning a city where there are multiple local churches. So 
if there's only if there was only if there was a small city and only one church, one community of believers, okay, it's pretty straightforward. But most cities are not like that. Most cities today are large, not like Bible times. Bible times cities were small, few hundred people, few thousand people made up a city. Some really large cities had maybe a few hundred thousand people. But uh, today's cities are not like that. They are big, millions of people. And they are you know, diverse. And uh, there are many local churches that are part of the church in the city. Which means if Satan can begin to try to weaken the church in the city by infiltrating any of the local churches and starting to cause division, starting to cause strife, starting to cause things that are happening uh, that could affect the overall life and strength of the church in the city. So we need to be aware of that. We need to be very careful. And while we cannot control or influence every local church in the city, that's not possible. What we can do, every local church or every Christian ministry can take responsibility to make sure that they are doing what's right before God and making sure that you, they don't let Satan infiltrate them. Make sure that they stand against opposition and help other churches in the city to stand against hardships and opposition. Okay. So I will pause here for today and uh, what I just want to impress uh, on our hearts and minds is this, that just as we must understand the natural dynamics of the city, we must be very aware of the spiritual side of what's happening in the city. And just as the natural you know, dynamics keeps changing, it's not constant, it keeps changing over time. Even so the spiritual dynamic of the city keeps changing over time. It may not be the same what as five years ago. It may not be, you know, 10 years ago, just very different from now, okay? Uh, yeah. So I see a question there from Manu about Revelation 3, 9, the synagogue of Satan. So the word synagogue simply means an assembly of people. So here's a group of people who are under the influence of Satan whether they are actually openly worshiping Satan may not be the case, meaning they're not, they may not be as, you know, as we see in Philadelphia, they may, may not be openly Satan worshipers, but they are a people who are under demonic influence. They claim to be Jews. That means outside they're saying we are Jewish Jews, but they're actually being demonically empowered. So they may not necessarily be worshiping Satan openly. They claim to be Jews but they are being under the influence of uh, Satan. Okay. Has my voice been breaking all along or are you able to hear me clearly? We can hear you, Pastor. At least I can hear you. Okay. All right. So I'm not sure whether it was um, because some can hear. And, yeah. All right. So we're going to continue this tomorrow. Um, and uh, just say, you know, talk about, uh, just look a little bit more about the spiritual dynamic and how we can tell what is happening spiritually in the city, right? Uh, give you some uh, pointers on that. So uh, we can be sensitive. This is what's happening spiritually in my city. Therefore, I must be careful. At least we can take care of our local churches, you know, and uh, our churches who are on within our influence, we can help them. Uh, nowadays in a, in a city, there are many hundreds of churches, maybe even thousands, depending on the size of the city. Uh, while we cannot you know, influence everybody to whatever extent we can, but influence churches to be strong, to avoid infiltration from Satan and to stand up against opposition from Satan. That we can strengthen each other uh, as we, we'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay, um, we're going to close in prayer. We'll continue this tomorrow. 
uh, just want to invite somebody to please uh, pray with us as a class that God will open our eyes, help us to understand this, especially in relation to where God has placed us, that God will give us our insight and understanding in these things. Okay, can somebody please pray for us as a class? Go ahead. Father God, we just come before your throne, Father God, once again. Father God, give your uh, your wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that we understand to our city, Father God, what is happening there, Father God. Give your revelation, give your more understanding, Father God, that we can understand, Father God, what is happening. There are different, different places, and Father God, that we can understand in a spiritually way, Father God, and we will work, Father God, to our city, Father God. This is our... Uh, your slim father god bless us father god to understand and work within our city father god raise your people father god raise your church father god that we can stand to your throne father god nicely father god help us to understand and lead us to your kingdom way father god thanking you for our, uh, thanking you father god for our classes thanking you father god for our subject father god that we are understanding all subject father god nicely way father god thanking you father god thanking you to everything thank you father god and uh, i pray for every uh, every city father god and also i pray for like afghanistan father god uh, give mercy and peace father god to every city and that place also father god father god you bless bless and keep your people to every place father god that they will work through your kingdom we father god thanking you for our class thanking you sir and every student father god and thank you father god to networking thank you father god thank you almighty jesus name i pray Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. We'll uh, see you again tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day and God bless. Bye now.